What is up everybody? Welcome to the final video of Unit 3 and we've saved the easiest for last so get right to smashing that like button and let's do it. Okay, so there was a lot in video 3.8. This one will be a quickie if that's okay with you. The topic is automatic stabilizers, but we're still talking about fiscal policy, which as you'll recall is government tax and spending policies. But there's actually two categories of fiscal policy, discretionary and automatic. Discretionary fiscal policy is what we dealt with in the previous video. It's when policymakers specifically take action to close an output gap and hopefully smooth out the business cycle. Automatic stabilizers, on the other hand, don't require any new action taken by policymakers. The idea is that there have been programs or policy structures that kick in automatically when the economy enters into a recession or an inflationary gap without the current policymakers doing anything. If that sounds a little confusing, don't worry, I can explain. The primary form that automatic stabilizers take is in the form of social safety net programs that provide transfer payments to people who qualify. Let's assume that the economy is in a recession. That means the output has fallen and unemployment has risen. In many countries, including the US, there are transfer programs that people qualify for based on their income and employment status. So when a large number of people lose their jobs, as happens in a recession, many people will automatically qualify for things like unemployment benefits, Medicaid, welfare, and food stamps. Notice that these are considered automatic stabilizers because a person qualifying for these programs requires no action taken by current policymakers. Rather, policymakers in previous years and decades created and established these programs and they kick in automatically to smooth out the business cycle. When the economy is in a recession, as we just established, automatic stabilizers are expansionary, helping prevent consumption and AD from falling further than they would in the absence of such programs. The US tax code also serves as an automatic stabilizer since less tax revenue is collected as GDP falls and this also helps prevent consumption from falling even further. When the economy is facing inflationary pressures, automatic stabilizers are contractionary. For one thing, tax revenues increase automatically as people bump up into higher tax brackets and as more people are employed, more income tax revenue is collected. Additionally, fewer people will qualify for unemployment benefits, Medicaid, welfare, and food stamps. Again, all of this happens without any action by policymakers. I know that some of you who are gonna get a five on this exam are sitting there right now and wondering, maybe even out loud, about how the last video was about discretionary fiscal policy and I included transfers in that, and now I'm over here saying they're automatic. Well, maybe an example can help. Back in 2020, when fear of the pandemic that shall not be named struck the US in full force, 6.6 .6 million Americans newly applied for unemployment benefits in the last week of March. How insane is that? For a little bit of reference, it was about 200,000 a month before. Yeah, you see that ginormous spike? Yep, that's March 2020. Okay, so when those people receive their unemployment benefits, that's an automatic stabilizer. Then in April, Congress and the President passed legislation spending over a trillion dollars and among other things, greatly increased the dollar amount of unemployment benefits and extended eligibility. This is a discretionary action since it involved new action by policymakers. I hope that that helps. But yeah, the big idea is that when automatic stabilizers are in place, they should smooth out the business cycle and help the economy avoid overheating during expansions and avoid catastrophic declines in AD during recessions. All right, so that's unit three. You've survived another unit, so study up and finish strong. Until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and check out the description to get answers to these questions as well as other great study materials as you prepare for your exam, and I will see you in the next video.